Hello, Animation fans, and welcome to another iAnimate podcast. I'm your host, Larry Vasquez, and you're listening to episode 95. In this episode, we have Michael McCarevich joining us. Uh, Michael has been a longtime Pixar animator, uh, almost two decades, and has worked on some of the coolest movies with some amazing directors. Um, he's worked on Incredibles, Ratatouille, Up, and has won multiple Annies for his work there at Pixar. Um, he's recently left Pixar after almost two decades to work at Spire Animation, where he is the head of character animation. And so it was just a really neat opportunity to get to talk with him about his time there at Pixar and uh, his new ventures. So definitely check it out. All right, Michael. Well, thanks so much for joining us. Um, as we were kind of talking beforehand, I know you can get busy. Um, you've got a new gig at Spire Animation. Um, you were at Pixar for about 19 years. Is that correct? Yeah, it was 19 years. Yeah. All right. You've got to work on some beloved franchises, some cool directors, Brad Bird. Um, you've won a couple of awards, I think, for your Annie. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So you've got a resume. And so we really just appreciate you joining us on this podcast and talking with us. So thank you very much. Oh, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Killer. All right. So one of the things I love to do is I love to see how people kind of get into this arena. How did you come into animation? What made you want to get into it? <laughs> what, what trained oh, you, you know? Oh, yeah, yeah. Well, I never wanted to get into it. No. No, no. Super, super accident. <laughs> okay. Well, let's hear yeah. it. Okay. So I've got, I've got, um, so I come from a family of engineers. Okay. My two older brothers are engineers. My dad's a big engineer. My mom did it as well. So I was the youngest of three boys. So pretty much was expected to become an engineer. <laughs> um, so when, when time came for me to go to college, I kind of went against the grain and I said, I want to go and be a filmmaker. I did want to be a filmmaker, but live, live action film. So I want to go to UCLA, actually be on a set, a physical set, you know, and like do <laughs> things and just be part of that whole film industry. I thought it'd be fun. And uh, really, it just wasn't going to happen with my dad. He was just like, nope, that we're not going to do that. Um, so it was just hard to just go against the grain that way. So pretty much had to go and to engineering school so i went okay. to riverside okay and i did engineering down there computer science for about a year um because that's just kind of what my, you know my dad said you know <laughs> like, you gotta do it um but i i hated it it, it was horrible it, it just was the worst you know and i was terrible at it and my brother was down there mentoring me and he was like man you are terrible you know and, <laughs> and i'm like yeah, I feel terrible at yeah. it. You know and I, mean? I don't want to so, do it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So he's like, I don't think you're going to get a job, man. And, uh, <laughs> and if you do, it's going to be hard and you're going to lose them quick. You know, that kind of thing. Uh -huh. so, because he was an engineer and he was just like, dude, there's a lot of competition out here. Mm. It's it's not that easy. So um, thankfully, like my mom was paying attention and she saw I was trying, but I just hated it. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So she found the Academy of Art in San Francisco and she basically was like, look, why don't you go there? And it's a, it's a compromise between you and your dad because it's art, which I think you want to do. And it has computers, which your dad wants you to do. Uh. And I think I can sway him into just kind of like doing that. Okay. But that still was different. I was like, art school? Like, no, no, film school. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, <laughs> and she's like, no, that's not going to happen. So it's got to be art school. Or, or I think that's all I could do for you. Uh -huh. that kind of thing. So, so then I said, sure, of course, because I hating what I do. So I, <laughs> yeah. I went to San Francisco, did, did, did that, that. And I, I just tried a bunch of classes, you know, you gesture drawing and, and 3d modeling and Photoshop, like everything kind of under the sun, trying to find something to do and animation uh, was what was, stuck, huh? Yeah, exactly. Okay, so this is why I typically start out with this question because I think it's always fascinating on how people get into this. Sometimes yeah. you'll hear, you know, in some of our guests, it's like, oh, yeah, I just, I knew it. I loved to draw since I was little and this and that. And yeah. I, I kind of wanted to, you know, and then it's other times like this. And, you know, uh, I bring up uh, our, our head of character animation here at iAnimate, Jason Ryan, who was looking at getting into, um, finances and stuff. He was going to be an accountant. And so it's just it's like th these kind of polar opposites here that you kind of go, okay, so how do you get into it? So that's pretty funny that that was kind of your route into this. Yeah. I, 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 when I hit an animation class, something about it stuck because okay. I've always wanted to be an actor and perform and do something kind of like that. So I was like, this is kind of neat. This yeah. is, I, I can be an actor through anything. Yeah. That's kind of neat. And I, 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 I believe I had a natural like 
knack for it. Like it, it sort of came a little bit more naturally mm. to me of just attacking it. Um, so I just decided to put everything into animation. So meaning like, I, I didn't want to be a generalist. A lot of my friends were doing that. And I was like, I think I'm just going to be like a super master at one thing. And that's what I decided to do. And I've been trying to do my whole career is yeah. just the best I can at one thing, you know, like, <laughs> so at school, I just focused on, on animation, animation, animation. What, was there anything that made you want to be that, that master of one? Was there anything that, you know, maybe kind of your upbringing or was it the fact that, I, hey, look, I'm kind of only in it right now and I don't want to go back to engineering it, <laughs> or what was well, it? it? It was tough because uh, some of the friends in front of me were not getting jobs. Um, and I was riding the train. This was, I, I hated this, but I would ride the train to, to, uh, to school and I would see all these miserable people on the train going to work into the city and they had to got miserable faces on, you know, and no. <laughs> I'm like, holy shit, I don't want to be part of this. But the, the, the other crappy thing was I would, whenever you bumped into somebody and they'd be like, oh, what do you do? You're going to college. Like, what's up? You know, mm. before when I used to say computer science, they'd be like, oh yeah. And all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I'm an artist. <laughs> and like, <laughs> the, dude, the faces that people would make, you know, like, <laughs> oh, that's sweet. That's really nice. Yeah. Good you know, luck like, with that. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. It was like, I hated it. And I, I was so filled with piss and vinegar, you know, and <laughs> I, and, and I was like, you know, I'm, I'm going to make this work because um, I was angry. I, I wanted to prove my dad wrong, that, that I could do this, that I could make something out of this. I wanted to prove my mom right and, and sort of like be like, you know, thank you for the support that you, you know, believe in me. And all the jerks that basically were like, oh, you're an artist. Good luck. You know, like, gotcha. <laughs> I just wanted to give them a big middle finger. Um, so I worked really hard in art school to try to make it work. And it was my second chance. So I figured if I can't make this work, I, I don't know. And I needed to get the hell out of the house. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> you need to get the hell out of the house and be your own person and be like, I never want to depend on anybody. Gotcha. So all this stuff was happening to me during college. And so one of my friends were in front of me, like graduating, they weren't getting jobs, but they were more generalists. And I just figured like, you know what, if I just become really good at one thing, mm. there's gotta be a job out there for me where I'm like, it's just a specialty. And, and I just felt like that's what I wanted to do. I didn't have interest in other stuff. So I said, I've got to be the best I can. At gotcha. This. Okay. That makes sense. Makes total sense. I just didn't know if you wanted me kind of a director too, if you wanted your hands on everything or what kind of focus you had, but that makes a lot of sense. I did not. All I ever wanted to be is provide memorable moments for, for, you know what I mean? Let yeah, yeah. get that they're watching an animated movie and let them just be there yeah. with, with the person. Um, and I'm still trying to do that. It's still hard, of course, you know, but, yeah, that, that, that was, uh, it was hard times. I mean, I remember working, like I would get up at, let's say five, six in the morning, and then I'd get back about one in the morning. Oh, wow. Yeah. So for three years, three years of that. Yeah. You know I mean? Now, are you from Southern California or are you from Northern California? I'd say I'm more from Northern California. Okay. I, wasn't, I wasn't born here. I was born in Poland and I lived in South Africa for a while and then moved to Boston and then eventually came out here. But okay. I've been out here since I've been like, I think 10, okay. 10 years old. So yeah, I've considered home gotcha. in Northern California. Okay. Yeah. I mean, you mentioned Riverside, I know that's Southern California and then you're mm -hmm. up there, been up there. So I didn't know if you went from Northern to school there or from school. Southern yeah, no, there. always okay. kind of been a Bay area kind of okay. brat, I guess. And then, uh, <laughs> yeah, but I don't mind other places. It was fun to go to like the LA area, uh -huh. uh, you know, but uh, yeah. And you said that was at, um, we're up there in Bay area. Oh, uh, the which school did I go to? Is yeah. that which, uh, the Academy of Art at Academy in, of in Arts. San Francisco? Yeah. So, how far out of graduation there did you get in somewhere? Uh, directly. Okay. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah. So, I, you know, I worked really, really, really hard. Like I mentioned, I didn't sleep yeah. much and I just kept making, just working on my portfolio, my portfolio. And I stopped listening to the school and I learned quickly to fend for myself. And I think that really helped me. Okay. Because like early on, like I realized the school just didn't care about you, you know? And, uh, you know, they just want money and, and I get it. It's a business, but it kind of sucked to see that. But I, I, after I just realized that early, I was like, I don't think they give a crap. <laughs> you know what I mean? So and don't get me wrong, I'm really happy because they got me into Pixar. Like it did, the school got me. So I'm not trying to bounce on it, but I, it, that was my experience. I felt like they didn't care. So what I did was I stopped 
just listening and I realized I got to do this on my own. I really got to gotcha. figure this out. And um, so what I would do is, like I mentioned, I'd be like, look, I want to focus on animation. So every semester they would have you do five classes and maybe one of them would be an animation class. Uh, I'm like, well, why the hell am I taking pottery and this other class and, and this other, like it doesn't, you know, English sometimes, all that kind of stuff. And they'd be like, just because you have to. I'm like, well, these are like two, two to $2,500 a pop, man. Nice. This ain't cheap. This is like serious. So the first thing I did was like, listen, can I just go to my local, my local college, which is like 50 bucks a pop, and just take some of these classes and transfer? And they're like, nah. So <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, of course not. You know? I, I see what's happening here. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so I was like, all right, all right. How about this? How about I just quit school i'll quit academy i'll take all of these general ed classes down there for like super cheap enroll again and transfer everything and they're like no you can't do that either there's like a limit to like when you when you quit and when you come back and i think it's because they didn't want people doing that right right so once again i'm like ah oh, you guys man that sucks you know? <laughs> so get this so i just basically was like all right fine i'll i'll take these classes but i'm not going to really do much in them so Every semester, the four out of five classes, I would walk into first day and I would talk to the teacher. I'd say like, look, I really, I'm sure this is a great class, but I want to be an animator and this isn't going to help me get into animation and be an animator. So what will it take for me to get a C minus in this class? And 90% of the teachers took it well. They're like, well, what do you mean a C minus? I go, I just can't spend the time to get an A because it's just not going to help me. Right, right. So four out of five classes, I did C minuses in constantly. Okay. On purpose to take all of that extra time and put it into the one class, which is animation. There you go. <laughs> so, so my grade point average dropped from, <laughs> from like a good <laughs> to like nothing. It was like two point. Two two percent, you know what I mean? It was, it was bad. Yeah, yeah, my yeah. mom, who knew I was a good student, was like, "What are, is are going on? I see you leaving at like, you know, six in the morning, and you come back at one in the morning." It's like Michael, what, what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I told her, "It's like, mom, mom, I don't think grades matter." And of course, you're talking to an engineer. They're like, "What do you mean <laughs> grades don't matter?" And I'm like, "There's just this portfolio and." I think that's all that matters. And I, I talked to some teachers that I really believe in. They're, they're, they work at Pixar. And I asked, I said, do, do, do the grades matter? And they're like, no, focus on your portfolio. So I, I took that chance. I said, I'm going to go to every teacher and say, wow. I don't want to basically get an A, C minus. What was the take? And you know what? Most of them were good. And they were like, you know, if you just show up to class and you do these two assignments, I'll give you your C minus. <laughs> so the amount of time that gave me to animation was huge huge That's and the awesome. one teacher the one teacher who would always be like what how dare you you know like <laughs> that teacher i'd be like forget it man and i just go straight to my counselor i'd be like drop the class give me a new class i'd get a new class do the same thing to that teacher and they'd be like yeah it's fine yeah <laughs> and it was a big lesson in like don't let people stand in your way you got to take the bull by the horns yourself you've got to sort of make your way you know everything in life is a negotiation like a lot of little lessons learned when I was younger to, I think, get me to when I graduated to get me into Pixar right after graduation. That's awesome, man. That's awesome. And I love it. You know, we've talked about this on some of the with our previous guests, too. the hard work, you know, um, quite phenomenal that right out of school, you're able to get in with Pixar. And that's that's not always the case. But yeah. there's also part of that. Um, equation was your dedication and hard work and you can't get to do what you did outside of that yeah and the two big the two big things was i was fucking angry like i was i don't know if i could swear on you go for it yeah <laughs> okay. so, so i guess you could beep it out but there uh, you go. <laughs> so, but i was i was like just full of this this piss and vinegar and just like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna make it like forget all the people who don't believe in me like like just like big middle finger to them but I was also super scared and fear is a fantastic motivator, <laughs> There you right? go. It's huge. And you gotta have enough of it to get you going, but uh, you can't be so much that it like freezes you. Right, man. right, right. So I had a lot of fear and a lot of just like, just energy as this like young kid trying to make my way into the world. Gotcha, gotcha. So you're probably what, uh, 19, 20? 
Oh, when I you know, when I graduated? Yeah. Oh no, when you're when you're you're at piss and vinegar. Yeah. When you're no, yeah, was, yeah, yeah. So, 1920. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I was young. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, I mean that's gonna kind of happen about that age anyway. So <laughs> <laughs> a lot of it, yeah, absolutely. Got a lot of energy, you know. That's, but that's good. Yeah. Like you're saying, hey, let's funnel this. Let's focus this. You know, let's use that energy to for something good here. Absolutely. Yeah. Just complete focus got me into into pixar which was huge and at that time like nowadays pixar has every year a dedicated internship probably about you know eight to twelve students lots of serious teachers like all this stuff right it's really amazing because they've really built that platform up but when we got in like it was me and another person dan uh when we got in that was back in the day when they were like i don't know maybe we should have an, uh, an internship uh anybody got some free time it was like one of those things gotcha so they didn't have it every year. If they did have it, it's maybe one or two people. It was really hard to get in there. So I was just thanking my lucky stars that I made it. And then after that, I, I just had to not screw it up. You know? So that's how you got in was it through an internship there. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Like I graduated. I, I was I sent in my stuff and they were like, yep, why don't you come on in? You know, uh, we want you to do the internship for three months and we'll just see see what happens. That's awesome. Yeah. Now. You, you know, we mentioned that you've been there, you were there prior uh, for mm -hmm. about 19 years, almost 20 years there. So early on, um, who were some of your mentors and that you uh, worked with during your internship? Yeah, uh, Angus McLean was one, a big instructor of mine. Angus just did uh, Lightyear. He's the director of Lightyear. So, gotcha. uh, and he directed the Toy Story of Terror uh, half hour special. So Angus got in there as an animator and then worked his way into story and directing and stuff like that. But I'd say like Mike Venturini, Angus McLean, Andrew Gordon, mm. Scott Clark were my initial mentors that helped me at school and in and at, at the studio. Gotcha, gotcha. And then I had a variety of other uh, amazing artists because you are literally surrounded by huge talent. Yeah. <laughs> so it's one of those like trial by fire, like you need to get, you. it's just hard. You just go like, I'm surrounded by these people and I got to keep up. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. So we've just uh, uh, we've had a uh, podcast interview with Andrew Gordon, and uh, it was really cool because back in this was 2000, I think I had just graduated college, and he, he had did the uh, CSU Summer Arts in uh, Fresno, and okay. so I got to meet him there. So this was okay. like you know just did a podcast with him maybe a year and a half ago. So that was really cool to be able to many years later uh, talk <laughs> with him about that. You know, so it was pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so during that, uh, you said about three months on the internship. Three months, yeah. What was it that got you the green light to continue to get hired? Well, what were they looking uh, for what you know, what kept yeah. So at, at the time they were working on Nemo, um, but also uh, Incredibles was happening, uh, starting off. So they were finishing off Nemo, and Incredibles was kind of starting to go. Okay. And so after the end of the internship, they basically did this thing where they would show your tests, what you've done, the whole internship to your fellow um, animators, um, which was just nerve wracking. I mean, it just <laughs> freaking sucks because you're just this kid trying to do these tests on your own with your one mentor. And then all of a sudden they're like, cool, you're going you're gonna to have dailies. You're going to show to everybody, including Brad Bird, the director who's going to be there. And you, you're going to just show your work. I mean, I mean, that, was, <laughs> that sucked. That was horrible. You know, that's butterflies in the. Yeah, in the yeah. So the scary thing was just, just showing in front of everybody because you're just like, you know, even now I'm showing in front of people, I'm still get butterflies in the stomach. Right, you know? right. Being just this young kid and you're like, oh, here we go. This is going to be tough. And and I didn't know it at the time, but they they play pranks. They they, they have fun with, you know what I mean? Potential okay. animators coming in. So <laughs> so they we would show our work and we would start getting notes from your fellow animators, you know, the, the professionals that are in the room but they would be really strange notes. So they'd look at something and go like, oh, I think, I think this pinky finger needs to be uh, a little bit curled in more and this and this. And you're like, okay, I mean, okay, it's very specific, which is cool, you know, that, that, that one's fine, that's normal. But then you get stuff like, I don't know, the shot feels like, -ba 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 -ba, and I think it needs to be more like, -ba 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 -ba. <laughs> you know, and you're like, uh, okay, all right, you know. And then I remember, <laughs> I remember Bolum, who's French, amazing French animator, would just talk in French, you know, and so, so you're going, uh, what? And then Adam or somebody would be like, oh, let me translate. And he would translate. 
later I found out Adam doesn't know French at all. <laughs> He's just making his own stuff up too, you know? So, um, so they were really just kind of messing with us. Yeah. Like that, you know? It was fun. And then, of course, it, it just starts getting weird. And then uh, I think uh, Brad Bird was there. So he was just kind of like, all right, let's just stop. You know? Now, <laughs> you're like who okay yeah all right it, yeah it was it was one of those oh thank god like he's just like we're just we're just messing with you we love <laughs> it great job you know that kind of thing like and everybody had fun they clapped and then very they, cool it was so nice because everybody did the pat on the back and and all these animators were like nice job yeah good job. you know like really nice and it felt so rewarding that's you know? awesome man and then right after that everybody left dailies and then dan and i were the the interns left in the room with brad and brad basically was like Hey guys, I love it if you work on Incredibles. We'd love to have you. That's so, amazing. Yeah. So that Quite was amazing. Like, uh, yeah. Yes. <laughs> no. Is this another one of those pranks here, Brad? Yeah. 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 So so after that, you you get hired on, but only as a run of show. You're not hired on full time yet. They they still do the test. You know, they still like, let's just see how one movie goes. And then We'll see if you last. Because again, in there, you're now in production too, which is correct. A little bit different from you a know. A little bit different. Full yeah. on production, kind of see how you know, just test the waters. Manage under time and things of that. You know, the constraints there. Mm -hmm. That's exactly. awesome. So, you, uh, what did you do on the first Incredibles then? Uh, well, the first thing I did was we're assigned as fixers, which was interesting. Under under Tony Pacilli, we would be we that's what our designation was was fixers, and we would fix shots here and there intersections slight adjustments and things if clothing did something we had to fix the clothing or at least the animation so the clothing could be resend a lot of lot of that kind of stuff so gotcha. i always laugh because I, I love i love to show this as you know people go what what did you do and i and i show them where uh e and helen like helen goes to e's house and Helen is crying and she's like, oh, I think Bob's cheating on me. And, and he's like, what's your problem? You know, fight, win. Yeah. Like, You're Elastigirl. You know, that kind of stuff. <laughs> so I show that sequence and people are like, wow, you did that? And I go, I did all of the tissues. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So if you guys watch that toilet paper and that tissue, that's my work, man. That's, that's where you put that's where you put it on the real gray, everything else out except for those. And you're like, those, look, that's yeah. You just that's have to blur idea. everything else out. Yeah, and, that's right. <laughs> and it's, you know, and and it's true. You you're just doing little things like that, but it's wonderful because I got to work with great animators who mm. are doing those shots, who just need a little bit of support, who may not be as, let's say, computer savvy because uh, they're coming from a different, you know, a different field or whatever. They're just not as into the the geekiness of the computer that I grew up in, splines and three D. Yeah, so yeah. I was like, let me help you with this. And it was such a great, as I could help them, they would train me. You know what I mean? I could ask uh, yeah. them questions and be like, why did you choose this? And what right. are you doing here? And they were like, oh, you do this, you do that. And so I would absorb all yeah, yeah, yeah. information. And it was this great symbiotic relationship between uh, artists. That's awesome. Yeah. And so, you know, how far in did you know that you were going to be a full-time hire? Uh, uh, see, about couple months in then okay. at that point um they pulled another prank uh, <laughs> i don't think you could do today but it was one of those pranks of like hey mike can you come in uh then the manager needs to see you and you're like oh shit you know like I, I i don't know this doesn't sound good you know that kind of stuff and and you know when went in there and my my, my supervisors and managers there and they're like hey man you, you've been doing great but we just don't have the capacity to keep anybody right now you know so uh, just want to let you know, we love you, but you know, it's going to be tough and this, and, and, you know, you, so you take it in stride. You're like, ah, do I hear you? Like, I appreciate the opportunity. You know? uh, I'm going to burn <laughs> this place down after. Yeah, I leave. Well, yeah. and then I just see them starting to smile and start to like, kind of crack up and laugh. And I'm like, what is going on here? And then they just started busting out. <laughs> we're like, ah, we're just messing with you. We love you. We want to hire you full time, you know? And I'm like, holy crap, man. I just had a heart attack. <laughs> Half my pants there, you know. Because <laughs> when you're so when you're so close to a dream, yeah, you know, yeah, and then it just doesn't happen. I it's so like you're so close. <laughs> oh, so another quick question here: How far in did your dad go? Okay, hey son, all right. I think like um, I think it took a, a little bit to just be like, is this a real career? Gotcha. You know, like like is this really you're gonna get paid to do this? <laughs> <laughs> 
And then, you know, I think after, yeah, after the thing, Incredibles came out and he saw that I was there, that I was doing stuff, uh, you know, he became really supportive, of course, and like was really, I think, surprised by it. Gotcha. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, could see this yeah. was legit and you can run with it. Yeah. I, I you know, I think it, he's just old school in terms of yeah. just like, like, look, it's doctor, lawyer, um, engineer. That's how you survive. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. how you provide. Right. You know, that kind of stuff. And, and I absolutely understand. But yeah you could see there is another option if you work hard enough. Right. Right. And then he was able to see that. So yeah, that was just curious. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool. Um, now in 19 years of your time there, it, you know, you worked from Incredibles to what was the one after that one that you were on? Uh, oh geez. Okay. Hold on. <laughs> like, oh, man. I think, I think it goes Incredibles. I think cars, I think is after Incredibles. Okay. So is that the one you worked on? So I worked on Incredibles too, because I got hired as an animator. Uh, on incredible like like i went from fix to animator actually okay within that same one okay yeah because after i got tired you know like they were like oh we're just kidding we're gonna keep you on full time then they're like you're gonna actually be promoted Taking to animator. Shots. yeah so now you have to do two things you have to be an animator and help with fixes because back then we didn't have a crowds team or a fix team it was just me and dan <laughs> so <laughs> uh so if you guys want you know when you watch incredibles and you watch the end sequence you'll realize there's not a lot of people in the city and that's because it was just all about time and economics of you know like who's going to animate all this and right how much right it's going to cost and stuff like that so gotcha yeah so okay. we had to do both like i ended up doing shots as well as uh, fixing things so gotcha um in that 19 years of your time there at pixar you know and pixar's one of the meccas for animation, um, particularly for the stories and stuff. What had you seen um, retain in the DNA of the company? And what are some of the stuff that you saw kind of maybe change? Over the 19 years? Yeah. Um, it, uh, <laughs> that's a good question, Larry. <laughs> so, oh man. The reason why I ask is because I go, some, it, it's, there is something obviously unique about Pixar, right? But during time I, and things of that nature, it's tough to always kind of hold on to, things change. And yeah, so. let me, I guess let me put it this way why I think there was like, I would say almost like a golden age okay. of the studio that I was very fortunate to be a part of. Like, right. the studio is still doing well and stuff, but there's yeah, something yeah. different. And here's what I think it is that I was really surprised by as an artist at the studio. When we were there working on these movies, Incredibles, Up, Ratatouille, WALL-E, um, these were movies that were being made by a studio and taking severe chances at a mm. time when no one else would take these chances. Gotcha. When you look at something like um, Incredibles, people might take it for granted now because they're like, dude, what, superhero? You go, no, 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 no. This is pre-Marvel. Yeah, is yeah. Any Marvel stuff. Like, <laughs> superheroes were not a thing out there you know what i mean like it just wasn't as popular as it yeah. is now now you have a million superhero movies but back then not the case right and to do one that was focused on family definitely not the case so yeah. there was always risk taking that i was really surprised by i go okay we're gonna make this movie interesting but then came something like up you look at that and you go who's gonna make this it's about an old man right right and this young kid like this no one wants to see like an old man movie quotation marks here uh -huh. and you go and you look at it in terms of toys and sales and you go can you make toys out of this and right you go, not really right right you know what i mean so why are we making this movie and you go because it's a good story because people want to go watch it you know what i mean and you say the same thing with ratatouille you go why are you making ratatouille like who else is going to make a rat that cooks? Like, can we sell toys? Can you sell rat toys? And you go, I don't know, probably not the most, but we're going to do it anyways. And then Wally, there's no dialogue. Right. You want to do this or kids are going to be bored. You're like, no one else is doing it. We're going to take another risk. So it was movie after movie of severe risk, if you ask me, that no gotcha. other people willing to do. And they were successful at it because the stories were strong. You know? Yeah. And they weren't banking on just, it's just going to be this, like, we're going to make a lot of sales off of toys or something like that. Gotcha. Gotcha. And, and I think what really surprised me at this, at that same time was Steve Jobs. I remember he was like, you guys have to make more than one movie a year, because if you make more than one movie a year, you'll be able to survive a lot better because one of your movies will fail. 
they will absolutely fail. And if it does, you need to make it to the next one. Okay. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? So just as a businessman, he's just like, you have to have more going on. So slowly the studio was trying to make more movies so that they can, for survivability. Right. So, but we were doing these, we were taking these chances on the like, dude, you shouldn't be taking chances right now. Time. You know what I mean? Like uh, if this one fails, you might be done. Right. So I was so blown away that the studio is willing to take chances on movies at a time when they shouldn't in a certain way be taking chances. Right. Now, look, uh, as, as we move forward in time, we did make more movies. There's this idea that Pixar was going to make more. And I think they make two and a half every year or something like that. Like there was an increase in production. Right. But with the increase in production, I felt like there was a decrease in risk. And that didn't make sense to me in terms of math. Okay. And I think that's what sort of changed for me as an artist within the studio. Does that kind of go back to that little bit of fear that you talked about earlier too? You know, not, not the, uh, the petrifying fear, but the fear that like, we got to make this thing work. Whereas now you said that, you know, that two, two and a half, there's, you're kind of now banking more on the production of getting those out, like the businessman yeah. part of it versus and the fear of going, we got to make sure that this is, solid and right solid i yeah. mean solid i mean that happens so much where toy story 2 was redone com like super completely from scratch right. because it had to be solid ratatouille was the first movie that might have been if the pixar disney thing didn't happen that meant pixar was going to be on its own as a release uh. which meant everybody'd be like i don't know did disney have a big part of their movies let's see you know that kind of thing right ratatouille had to be solid so they br they brought bird in to sort of help bring it and shore it up and make it as strong as it could possibly be for the limited time we had to make it. Gotcha. Like, there was all of these things about making it solid, solid, <laughs> solid. Um, and, and, you know, to the credit, I mean, that doesn't always necessarily pan out. I mean, right. I, think, I think Dino, Good Dino was a movie that had its issues and had to be pushed a little, you know, like I think a year, they gave it an extra year and you know it's subjective to whether you like it or not but box office wise it wasn't the strongest of the film you know, right kind of right stuff. so then you ask yourself you go well is giving something more time really adding to a success or not then that's right. who knows right it's again subjective but um i thought that the more movies you do at least one of them should be even riskier than ever before gotcha gotcha you know what i mean the yeah. math the, the economics are make one extremely risky make one extremely safe and make one that's right there in the middle. Gotcha. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah. So, so you're playing in all courts, basically. Uh -huh. um, yeah. I mean, that's, that, again, I'm, that's just my Yeah, yeah, just, thing. yeah, and just. I'm, I have two, um, two businesses, you know what I mean? Uh, on the side of being an animator, I have right. two businesses. And so that's just my business brain going like, this does make more sense, but I'm not up there making these giant movies so i don't know if there's like if you're missing something like, like right, what's the right. full picture going on here but as a observer being there and looking at it from the outside i i think that's the biggest difference i was like wow we took some serious risks <laughs> making things that toys were not going to probably sell if people didn't go to this it might really hurt the company but it was so different and people loved it so much right. that it just panned out and then later as we did more movies the risk I thought just kind of less risky, more safe. Right. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. No, it's interesting. Very cool. Um, what were some of the things that, you know, Brad Bird, uh, maybe one of your other favorite directors that you worked with that you just, as a animator, artist, storyteller that you really just pulled from that you've taken now from your career. Oh, Cause those are pretty okay. unique opportunities, you know? Yeah. So, so Brad's a big one. Brad's like one of my favorite directors because He's so talented. Again, you just want to absorb everything you can from Brad. Um, he's inspirational. Uh, so he's able to just not educate you, but inspire you. And there are times you just need well, both. You know, gotcha. there's times you're working so hard that you're just, you're done. You have nothing left in you. And Brad sees that. And he, he just times these speeches that are just epic. <laughs> like, I mean, you're just like, I'm going to go to war with you, dude. Like, you know what I mean? Speeches. And he sees the crew get tired, tired, tired. And he goes like, here's a speech. And then all of a sudden at the end of that, everybody's like just pumped up and like, yeah, you Let's know, go. So it's amazing to be on a film with him like that. And every director's 
different. So you got to have to, you, you know, whoever you like to work with just kind of depends how you vibe with them. Like, for example, some directors are really sweet and nice and, and, and nothing wrong with that. Right. But I'm this sort of artist that really likes to cut to the chase. Okay. Like, I'm, I'm like, look, you can critique me. You can, you can throw it at me. I can take it because I just want to get to the work immediately. I don't want to have the like, oh, it's great night. And you have this sort the of flowery like, part. Yeah. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm personally okay with going in and throwing that all out the window. You know, but there's other artists that are not. They're right, like, right. You take the harshness of somebody. They they might be like, I can't take that. I need a little <laughs> bit of love. You know, like that. Kind yeah. Of thing. So, um, so every director is of course different. But I mean, I learned a lot from every one of them, from John Lasser, from Andrew Stanton, from Brad Bird, from Pete Doctor, from mm. Lee Unkridge. Like I was basically fortunate enough. Yeah. To get to work with these individuals and actually be in the same room as them. Yeah, it's amazing. Is awesome. Yeah. Now, um, I, I had a podcast and class with Tal Schwartzman and who, oh, yeah. uh, yeah, very cool animator. <laughs> um, and I think I remember, so maybe you can kind of help me out here. You also mentioned that Brad was very good at simplifying, um, the animation down. Like sometimes it was like kind of too much. It was like, let's, let's simplify this, simplify this type. Yeah. Uh, is that something that you've found as yeah. well? Yeah, very, very much so. Uh, he's got, he's got a good understanding of the entire picture at all times. And when you're trying stuff, you know, you may not have that time picture in your head. So you're trying stuff like this. He goes like, trust me, I don't need that right now. Like, gotcha. I just need this, this, and this. Um, and, in, and he'll explain why, which is so good too, which is another reason why I love working with him, where you're not lost in the dark. Like, I don't know, I just got a note, but I don't know why. <laughs> he makes sure you understand why the note is the note. Um, so you're on board. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. yeah, I gotcha. And, and absolutely his, his vision is his vision for the scene as well as like his way to simplify and caricature everything. is It's really, really wonderful. Um, and he's very open. Like I got to work with Brad three times now at, at Pixar. And the last time was so much trust that it made working with him so fun because, you know, at that point you just really trust each other. So when I got scenes from him and I got to deliver them back, I'm like, hey, Brad, this is different. I've changed things. I've changed layout. I've changed an idea. I've changed, you know what I mean? And he goes, bring it. <laughs> no, bring it. That's cool. And, and that's what you want. You go, yeah. I, I am bringing it. I'm bringing everything I can for a reason. And he understands that. So when, when there's things that are different, he goes, I see what you're doing. Right, I love right. It. I'm glad you're not just filling in the blanks. Right. You're a, bringing it. <laughs> a, a cog in the wheel, you know, that you're yeah. just, yeah, yeah. Very he doesn't cool. want that. He wants you to just, you know what? Every step, he's like, it should get better at every step. Gotcha. Every section, right? Yeah. No yeah. matter what department, it always just gets plus and plus and plus. So yeah. Um, I really love that. And there are times I I pushed it where people in dailies were like, I can't believe you're doing this. <laughs> and I'm like, I can't believe you're not. You know what I mean? Like, we need to fail more. We should be failing more. We should be pushing our work so hard and so much that there should be more failure instead of this like. Oh, let's just play it safe. And not that that always happens, but you get a sense of it sometimes. Right, like, right. I was never a fan of that. I said, let's see what we can do. And if you fall and fail, Pixar was a place that that is safe to do. Gotcha. Failure is part of process. You know what I mean? And and I think that's a good lesson. And I hope everybody gets to work somewhere where that's the case. Gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. Now, was the um, – I noticed when you are real, the last cycle – Oh um, yeah, yeah. Was that part of that? Because I think my brother had mentioned you did something really unique with that one. Um, uh, that one was more just extremely difficult, like physical stuff. Okay. She separated and she's doing all this stuff. So um, I remember really just putting myself away. And Brad was again very specific because he's just like, "Look, this section of the last cycle particularly has to be like it's kind of the craziest stuff where she's going from this to uh, from a, um, a building to a crane, a crane to uh, another building, to a billboard, to a train, like, and he basically said, Mike, you, you have to make this work. If you don't make this work, every other stuff that's around you, elasticycle wise, when she's on the, the, the streets and stuff, nobody's going to believe. So it's on you. <laughs> you're like yeah uh yeah okay Can you give me one of the speeches I, again real quick yeah well that's the thing is i revel in pressure like i love pressure it's just it's where i i'm a pressure cooker you gotcha. know what I mean? like i'm like bring it <laughs> so 
Brad knows that because he knows the individuals he's working with. So he knows, I think, how to sort of manipulate you into yeah, okay. doing better work, right? <laughs> Love so it. he'll say like stuff like that where maybe somebody else might take it the wrong way. I right. go like, hell yeah, dude. Okay. So that was just difficult. One of the most difficult physical shots I've ever done gotcha. was, was that. And the stuff I did before that was the the stuff with Bob and Violet kind of sitting on the couch. Yeah. And it was a sweet moment. And I got to do that entire sequence, which was really special to me. But there was stuff in there that I changed. And I even took dialogue out, which Brad is the writer. Wow. And you're like, you're taking dialogue out of your shots. I'm like, because I can do it without it. And I just want you to see that it's possible. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's when people in daily would be like, dude, what are you doing? And, <laughs> and I'm this like, is Brad Bird. Come on. Yeah. And, you know, so I tried it and Brad agreed. He said, you changed the cut by 90 frames and said, I did because it needs to be here mm. because now we're dealing with performance. And I think this works better. And I took dialogue out because I think this works better. And Brad would just go, yes, yes, yes. And if it was ever a no, he'd explain easily why it's a no. So yeah. I was on board. And I remember afterwards, I would like bump into him and go, Brad, I am, I'm really sorry if I'm pushing too much. Do you know what I mean? Like, uh -huh. yeah, yeah, yeah. You're, I, you're the director, you're the captain. And I'm very careful how to talk to Brad or any director in front of a team because I right. never want to undermine that, right? It's always like, it is your movie. I'm just pushing for you. you right, know? right, right, right. Like, and, and this was your third movie with him, right? Yeah, yeah. So you kind of got the feel of what he might be looking for and stuff. Yeah. This wasn't so, just you coming in blindly. And no, that's why it was so, I was so open to be trusted. And, and that's why I said, Brad, I, I hope I'm not pushing too much. And he goes, Mike, I can always say no. <laughs> you know? I can always say no. And I go, and I was like, right? You can yeah. always say no. That's yeah. And he goes, keep pushing. Keep that's pushing. cool. Yeah. That's really so cool. It's nice to be able to work at a place where you have that rapport with the director that you feel safe to do so, right? Yeah, that yeah. failure is okay. That if you fuck up or screw up, whatever. Like it's it's at the end of the day, they're they're there to just help you pick you up and go give it another shot. So, right. Very cool. So now you mentioned a phrase at the beginning of this memorable moments that you wanted to be able to create. Yeah. And your 19 years at Pixar, what were some of your favorite memorable moments that you created? Um, I think I really enjoyed working on like Ratatouille was a big movie for me because mm -hmm. it took me, I thought to another level as an animator. I felt like I leveled up, you know, like we all have that as artists. We're like, I think I got better. Gotcha. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I was asked to do things that I wasn't, I didn't know if I was capable of doing. And I don't think people around me necessarily thought I could do. Okay. And so it was a real trial by fire. And it's very personal to me when you go through it and you survive. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so when I have my mentors around me who I look up to tremendously and they're coming over and they're going like, dude, it's working. Like That's awesome. Like you're getting the like, Mike, this is good. Nice work. I'm just like, dude, it's you. Like, thank you for telling me that. That's amazing. You know? So I felt that movie had a lot of that. And, and, um, and, and I also had a, uh, and I talked about this on a different, uh, interview, but I had a artistic breakdown on that movie at the same time Okay. where I couldn't animate, um, because I was overworked and I didn't realize it. Uh. So I lost all artistic capability. Like gotcha. It just went away. And I had a whole thing of like lying to production for like two weeks because they were expecting shots and all this stuff. And I couldn't animate anything. I couldn't animate a head turn. I couldn't animate a single thing. So every time they would stop by the office, they're like, hey, Mike, those shots are coming up. Uh, you said you'd have them by Wednesday. I'd be like, oh, yeah, sorry. Just a couple of things. Uh, it'll be uh, Thursday. And then Thursday, you know, I wouldn't happen. And they'd be like, oh, maybe Friday. And then I just kept doing it for two weeks. Man. So I finally show the shots in dailies. Um, just scared because I don't know what's happening with me. I'm like, what the hell went wrong? I, yeah. I can't do anything anymore. And that's scary. If anybody ever like, you know, if you rode a bike and you can't ride a bike anymore, it's just that you go, why can't I ride a bike? Right, anymore? right. What is wrong with me? Yeah. And I was so scared. I didn't talk to anybody. I didn't know what was wrong with me. I lied to management, didn't tell any of my other artists. And then I showed two, two weeks later than I was supposed to in dailies. The shots generally went well. Like there was a good response. So I say, okay, whew, there's still something there. But then Brad straight up was like, hey, Mike, can you stay? Uh, you know, when people are leaving for daily, like uh -huh. daily over, he's like, do you mind staying? It's just like, <laughs> oh, shit. I think I'm, you know, and you're like, I, 
pretty sure I'm getting fired. You I know, just like, got called out by the teacher right now. Yeah. Yeah. And straight up principal's office. I think I'm getting fired. I think <laughs> this is it, which was kind of, again, ironic because, or like maybe not ironic, but like it made sense because Brad hired me in a certain way. So I'm mm. like, okay, I guess it makes sense if he fires me. Right? <laughs> so, <laughs> I got hired and, and fired by Brad Bird. Yeah. Yeah. And so like I, 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 everybody left. I went up to Brad and, and Dylan was there, who's the other supervisor. And I, he was, I just told him, I said, Hey man, I'm really sorry about the work. I'll try to do better. And he was like, nah, nah, the work is great. It's working. Where have you been? And I was so surprised that he, he acknowledged that I was not around for like two weeks mm. because I was so in my own head dealing with my issues. I wasn't in dailies. You know what I mean? I wasn't a voice. I wasn't anything. So he was just like, wait, are you okay? Like, Something's not right. Yeah. Something's not right. Yeah. And, and I looked at Dylan, I looked at Brad and I'm like, I can keep lying. You know what I mean? Like, and then I just couldn't, I just was like, I trust them. I really trust Brad. I really trust Dylan. And I, and Dylan was another mentor who was close to me. And I said, I can't animate. And they're like, well, what does that mean? Yeah. <laughs> I go to my office and I sit there and I try to do things and nothing happens and I'm scared and I don't understand what's wrong with me. Gotcha. And so they just had a straight up, like, all right, all right. Like, what do you need? Like, how can we help? And I was like, dude, thank you. You know, like, yeah, I'm not <laughs> fired, right? Uh, dude, totally. Yeah. And I was like, I don't know what I need, but I just think I need support. Like, I just needed someone to talk to and listen to and to complain to, you know? Mm. So I just said, can you, can Brad, you and you and Dylan come by my office after dailies, no producers, no other supervisors, just you two, and just talk to me about my work? And that's what they did. They did that like every day. They'd come by and be like, hey, Mike, you okay? And I'd show them what I thought was just garbage. I'll be like, look at all this garbage, you know, blah, blah, blah. And they'd be like, whoa, whoa, like step off the ledge. You're okay. <laughs> and I'd be like, all right, all right. So, and then they would just talk to me about the work. What, what are you going for? What do you need? What are you thinking? What do you want to, you know? And I had this closeness that I, that I felt safe. And that brought me out of my, my funk. All of a sudden, like two weeks later, I was like, I started to work and I was like, it's back. I feel it. You know what I mean? Like That's my hands, yeah. they're, they're doing things again. And I didn't know if I was going to lose it again. So I just worked when I got it back. I was like, we're going to rock this show. <laughs> <laughs> like, until I die, man, we're going to rock this show. So memorable moments I thought came out of that. So Ego, after he eats the ratatouille and he has to like, figure out why does I feel so good about all this ratatouille and then Skinner's like why is he eating it why is he liking the ratatouille and he has to eat it and go through all these emotions like there's that stuff like that Skinner reading the letter uh -huh. and going oh my god this is and then yeah. like it's all just eye acting and, and stuff you know that's and, cool um so like ratatouille was a really big milestone in my career for me about who I think I was who I was in as an anime or maybe who I think I could be and I, I got to, for a glimpse, for a moment, be with my mentors. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, on their level for just a moment. And it felt great. That's amazing. <laughs> so, and you drop back down and you go, damn it. And I, I'm going to keep striving to be like you, like my mentors. Gotcha. Like amazing artists that you just can feel like you can never catch, you know? So just out of curiosity, because that was, man, that was a while ago um, on Ratatouille have hindsight what do you know what it was that kind of got you into that fog was it um... yeah it was it was actually just never taking a break so that that story okay. talking about you know hey man i went to school like you know six in the morning i came back at one in the morning yeah i did that for three four years then i did when i got to pixar i did that exact same thing gotcha or another until ratatouille which was gotcha. another three or four years yeah 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 and I never took vacation. I just didn't take care of myself. And my gotcha. brain said, yeah, we're not doing this anymore. Dude. We're shutting down. Yeah. yeah. And my heart <laughs> kept going. My heart was like, man, I love this. And my yeah. brain said, nah, dude. <laughs> like, like, we're running off of fumes right now. Yeah. So I tell people like, hey, just take care of yourselves. Like, you don't know when it's going to come, but yeah. it's going to come. It's going to, you're going to stop all of a sudden. Yeah. Yeah. We had a, I had one of those uh, <laughs> where you feel like you're, you're getting worse. Not just even like it felt like you're losing it. Yeah. I'm like, I'm getting actually worse. How is this possible? I'm putting yeah. in more time. But yeah, it's that one part where you're just like, I need a rest. I need to be able to come up for breath. Yeah. And then go back down. Yeah. Yeah. It's your classic, like, what are my returns? And you realize they're just not happening. Yeah. You're, and that's when you're like, take a break, get away. You're just not 
producing you're producing too much for too little return. So gotcha. Not, yeah, yeah. Not gonna happen. So. No, I appreciate yeah. that. That's very cool to know, and that's why uh, I asked that because I was going. It's good for people to who are listening to this to kind of to recognize that. Yeah, and I I started you know I saw friends getting hurt by carpal tunnel. Uh, uh, you know, there's lots of reasons to start taking care of your, yourself, and I was getting older, of course, and 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 working harder hours. So it was just like, dude, you should really watch yourself because this is your career. Start being careful, backing off, taking taking breaks, you know, all that kind of stuff. So I started to really adjust myself uh, for that. Interesting. No, that's great, man. I appreciate that very much. So um, any other memorable moments before I want to try to transition? Oh, I mean, there was, uh, there was a lot. Any favorite I mean, characters that you got to work on that you go, if I could ever work on those again, these are the people, you know, these are the characters I would yeah. love to. Well, I think like uh, Up is great. I had a lot of just sweet moments in there. And, 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 and I think like, Months was one of my favorite characters. He's just mm. a cool looking character. I love Christopher Plummer's voice and mm -hmm. uh, he was just so fun. I love Months. So he's Very probably cool. my, my favorite characters to, to have animated. Um, Wally was great just because I'm a sci-fi geek. So I got to do the whole sci-fi robot thing, which was really neat, you know? Uh, um, yeah, I can't, I don't know. There's now your workflow, um, you have a pretty unique workflow, I think kind I, of developed in Pixar or kind of, that was some of the first I kind of yeah. heard regards to um, layering the approach, right? That's what you, yeah. yours is, right? Yeah. So I technically, if you think about it, I'm like, I don't know how to do post to pose and I can't draw. So you think like, how the hell is this guy named? You know, like, <laughs> how the hell did this happen? But it, it can, the computer does make it possible and layer, I, I'm a layered animator and, and you can layer in 2D as well, but it just wasn't popular. Like it wasn't as popular as your classic post to pose. Now I learned that in school and thankfully I had good teachers who were okay with me doing the layered method versus pose to pose. So it allowed me to continue to be an animator, but I, I had to do it in school because I saw all these post to pose animators. I was like, I don't know how to do that. So I'm going to do it this other way. And nobody taught me. I taught myself. Gotcha. And I just sort of kept doing it and doing it. And then when I got to Pixar, I kept doing it. It was not popular at Pixar either. So I was, I was feeling weird. And in fact, I tried to change my workflow for four years. Really? <laughs> yeah, because I felt like the weird one. Like, <laughs> like you go there and you're like, dude, these, these are amazing artists. And look at this pose to pose and look what they're doing. I, I, I'm obviously doing something wrong, you know, like, <laughs> like I'm, I'm the black sheep here. Uh -huh. And then came, I think Wally, which was like four or five years into my career. And I was producing work that was at a level that my peers respected. And it was at a level that it was supposed to be. And I was getting it done really fast, much faster than typically, you know, people would think. So at that point, I looked back at what I was doing and going like, why am I changing mm. again? <laughs> so I just stayed with what I had and go, apparently this method is a method that works for me. Um, I, I wish I could do post to post because it's just another method that I could have under my tool belt. Uh. You know what I mean? Because there's no, you know, I, I teach post to post and I never teach it as like, this is the right way. It's just a way. Right, right. There's lots of ways to work. If we could do them all, we'd be happy because you yeah. have all these ways of getting your shot done. And I just couldn't do it. My brain didn't function that way. So I stopped basically trying to change and go, I guess this is it. I this is how I roll. And nowadays, it was like, it was, it changed. There were more layered animators than I thought pose to pose at the end. Yeah. Gotcha. And maybe for just those that are kind of real new to animation, how would you explain your, you know, maybe layer approach, how you do things? Sure. It's a... Well, it's a fundamental 180 degrees difference in approach to the work. So, which is why I think it worked with some people because it's just how your brain sees mm -hmm. things. Now, some people are very graphic when they see things. They, they see like these great single graphical poses and they can make really good sense out of that. And, they, and they're able to break things down into just a couple of those graphical poses and there's your scene. Um, my brain doesn't understand that and in fact it's very strange it feels like it's you're telling the future for some reason i'm like how do you know that <laughs> that exact pose will be there on that exact frame i i i felt it weird uh. so what what i do is is more like an energy feel you're, you're you're taking the main core movement and getting the timing down like moving something first and then adding a second movement and then adding a third movement and then eventually 
kind of finding what the pose wants to be. Um, and so it's, it's very different. So and the way I, I kind of see it is pose to pose is like lots of controls for us because our characters come with 5,000 controls. Mm -hmm. So you're, you're going to use lots of controls to like make your pose, but you're going to have very limited posing. So it's just five poses. Layered is opposite. You're going to only use like 12 controls, but you're going to use uh, every single frame. So with pose to pose, you only use five frames. With layered, you use every one. <laughs> with pose to pose, you use maybe lots of controls. With layered, you use very little. So it's a completely different approach. Um, but the information can be told both ways. And both of the approaches have a way of lying to you. So they're not, neither approach has, you know, is perfect. Right. It's just kind of how you can kind of see that then. Exactly. Yeah. Like, I feel like pose to pose in a certain way lies to you in its in its timing because right. you as an audience have to do the in-betweens. Mm -hmm. You have to fill it in. Yeah. With layered, it's on one, so you're not filling anything in. But right. the way that layered, I feel, lies to you is in its posing because it's usually in the beginning, it's ugly posing. Gotcha. And it'll, change, <laughs> it'll eventually change to something nice. Yeah. So, so both methods have like a way of sort of cheating you. Right, uh, right. You have to adapt to if you're going to use the method. But you said you like it because it kind of feels like you get that energy that you're looking for, right? Yeah, I'm I'm a pure energy guy. I'm like, just show me it moving, and I will mm. give you, and it gives me a feeling, and then and I, I can, can kind of work fill on it that. in. Yep. Yeah. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now, real quick, because you mentioned you have a couple other businesses, you obviously teach in a brick and mortar, right? Yeah, we used to be brick and mortar, and we're still are, but because of COVID, it's gotcha. you know we're like we went straight to online. Okay. And we were we were not online. We were a mom and pop come to us. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like it was weird because it's the dumbest business decision you'll ever do, right? <laughs> like, why would you not be open to online and other people? And it was one of those like, you know what? We just wanted to keep it small and personable. Right. Face to face was really important to us. So, um, but COVID changed that. Uh, gotcha. So we went we went online, and we would like to go back to face to face. Um, we're just kind of, again, seeing how the world is. So. Gotcha. Gotcha. So then, some of the stuff you teach there or workshops that you where you go around, right? And you teach some of this kind of workflow. Exactly. Yeah. So gotcha. And then the other business is just about to launch. I can't say what it is yet, but okay. it, is, it does have animation. I was going to say, is it animation related? Yeah. Okay. Is, yeah. <laughs> hopefully in the next couple of weeks, that'll be out and you guys will see hopefully some cool stuff from there too. So. Awesome. But very cool. Very hard to be that busy with a family, full-time job, two, two other businesses, you know, like to manage that is just like, it's doable, but it's, <laughs> it's tiring, man. You're a hustler, man. <laughs> it's tiring, Larry. You just gotta, one of those, if you don't, if I don't keep running, I'll just die. You know? yeah, that's what I call my wife. She's like a shark. They don't, you know, if they uh, sleep, they kind of start to sink. That's if exactly she stops, that. if she starts, uh, stops moving, it's like, okay, she's done. She's going to go to yeah. sleep. So, yeah. I realize I've just become very good at multitasking, dealing with a bunch of things at once and just keep getting better and better at it. You know gotcha. I mean? All right. Well, quick transition here because you're now no longer at Pixar. You're at a mm -hmm. new studio, Spire Animation, right? Is that the name yeah. of it? Spire That's Animation right. Studio, yeah. yes. right? Huge jump from coming from Pixar after 19 years. Um, what was, uh, and I would love to get in a podcast with, I was telling my brother with uh, Ricky uh, Nevira. Is that how you pronounce yeah, his last uh, name? Yeah, Ricky uh, Nierva. Yeah. Nierva. Yeah. One of my favorite podcasts is with him and uh, Andrew Gordon. So I would love yeah. to get in a podcast with him. Okay. Well, um, I can get you in touch with him. If that you would want. be awesome, man. That'd be really <laughs> cool. So, uh, um, so I, some familiarity there. You'd had worked, you'd worked with him at Pixar. What was the, um, the, the jump? The jump was an ability for growth more than anything. Uh, I could see kind of what I was going to do still at Pixar and it wasn't going to change much. Like I, I just sort of did the math and go, look, there's, 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 there are other things that were changing in the studio that for me was, it just wasn't working anymore. So there was, there was student studio things that were happening. And then I saw kind of where we were going with films and I said, no, that's not going to work either. You know, so there was definitely stuff starting to change for me that I wasn't connecting to as much or have as much value as I thought it did. When gotcha. I first started there. And so I looked at, you know, I just kept it, I just kept an open door, you know, I was just like, Hey, what's out there. And then, um, Sean kept in touch with me, Sean Krause. He's from Pixar. From Pixar and, as well. I know. Yeah, yeah. He had like 25 years before he gotcha. jumped. You know? 
So Sean was just like, Hey Mike, are you interested? We'd love to have you over. And you know what? You know, I think, yeah. (laughs) So, um, and I, I felt very weird because I was leaving a family. I was Mm. leaving a home, the only home I ever knew that, that treated me very well. And I really didn't even understand how to deal with it. (laughs) So I asked like my manager, I said, is it okay if I go, you know, like I wasn't like, sure. Like, I I know I felt like I was gonna get fired multiple times here, but is it okay for, if I make that decision, right? And and thankfully they were like, oh, please don't go. And all like, they were very supportive and and thing, but they do, they also understand that there is growth out there. And, you know, my manager was like, Mike, it's an open door. If you, if you want to come back anytime, you know, come on. And I was like, then I think I have to go then. Gotcha. Because that's, this is the only way to change things. You know what I mean? So, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah, it's just a whole new ball game of like, why don't you go over there, start from scratch, which the whole thing is from scratch, build your team from scratch, like try, just try new things. And I said, mm-hmm. I'm, I, I, I would like to try new things. <laughs> <laughs> that a family, two businesses. Uh, yeah. yeah, I guess, I guess so. Yeah. So, and I guess, you know, Larry, if anything, it was one of those, like, if things went bad, I, I'd go back to Pixar or there's so much other stuff. I realized once I was outside of the Pixar bubble, right. I started to really see a lot of other stuff that's happening that I just didn't see before. Gotcha. You're content and there I, and good to go, huh? Yeah. That, and I started getting all these people starting to respond to me about like, Mike, what are you up to? What are you doing? Like, let's do it. And I was like, this is great. I didn't know there was so many other people out here working on projects gotcha. that would have interest, you know? So I was, uh, it just opened my eyes a bit more, which was, I think, good, of course. Yeah. You know, more perspective. Now, now you're head of character animation there. Is that correct? That's right. Yeah. My job is to just bring up, make sure that the animation there is on par, if not better than what's currently out there now. That's great. <laughs> so, no pressure. It's one of those, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> but it's it's always a team effort i'm i'm just there to build the best team and i can't do it myself i never could i am i think the animator i am today because of the people i work with around me every day gotcha yeah and, and that's what i'm trying to build is is good people yep. good artists that will push each other and uh you know brad always instilled that in me he he said we're never you're never the best by yourself but you're always the best as a team absolutely and um I, I really took that to heart and uh, I knew how much other people helped me. Let's put gotcha. it that way. Like, yeah, yeah. You know, it's, it is a, it's a group effort, team effort. I love it. Um, so just a wise to- person definitely surrounds himself by talented people. So always by people better than you try to always surround yourself. With than you. <laughs> right. Absorb, absorb, absorb. Uh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, the studio is going to do, or is it service work, full feature work? Is it no, episodic so, type stuff or how, yeah. how is so currently, it's it's a it's a feature film uh, feature film studio, right? We're okay. going to make feature films. We're basing um, everything on the Unreal pipeline, uh, so they sing the Unreal engine as the future. Um, gotcha. So uh, working with Epic as well, uh, you know, so they have like a little bit of a tie in there, and Epic has some funding into the studio as well. So the idea is to be, what is the future studio look like? Gotcha. Like, what, like what's if you were to start from scratch, like bam, right now, you know right, I mean? like, right. What do you do? And that's pretty cool. There's really talented people from Disney, Pixar, DreamWorks that are at the studio that are like, oh, I've been doing this for 25 years. If you gave me a clean slate, this is what I'd like to do. Interesting. And that's kind of what the studio is. Very which cool. Is, yeah, which is kind of neat. You know, you're like, <laughs> dude, because everybody has that like, I would like to change things, but I can't. Right, we all, right. We all come from that because somewhere in the studio, it's just entrenched. And it's really hard to change. Yeah. So if somebody gave you the option, like, well, what if you could? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Then all these possibilities start to open up. So as far as an animator is concerned, is that something that very much excites you to be able to come up, you know, develop new tools or new ways of doing things or the pipeline, I guess, for your specific area? I'd say the only thing that really, I'm not a tools guy. I'm not a technology guy, to be honest. All I want to do is if you give me something to animate, I want to make sure I have the ability, meaning that 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 rig is ready to be animated, that you can do the best job possible. Gotcha. So, but as for technology, all this stuff, you know, I go, the only really stuff that I see is whatever helps us as, as animators. Right. So, for example, if you're able to see real-time lighting and effects and simulation immediately, yeah, yeah. you're going to make better choices yeah. as an artist. So that kind of stuff really is cool. There's no longer this like, oh, all I see are naked 
models, right. you know what I mean? Or like leotards or something. And then three months later, I start to actually see <laughs> them. You know what I mean? Because you would make so many different choices. You're like, oh, I would have done that different. Or I didn't know that it was supposed to be raining like that. Or I didn't know that. And this whole I didn't know thing starts to get smaller and smaller. Nice. And it's all about making good choices. Because if you make good choices, it'll stand the test of time. It'll yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I love that. I think the Unreal will allow us to get there really fast. Um, but you're building something from scratch, so that's going to take time. So. Yeah, yeah. So no ETA as far as when, you know, maybe a first movie's coming out or anything along that lines? It, we're, uh, we're working right now on the first one. It's called Trouble, and it's in partner with Danny McBride and his um, his writing team. Um, I love Danny McBride and what he's done. Uh, you know, he's a funny, funny guy. Uh, he's done all the stuff he touches is really, really interesting and fun. So, um, but it's always on the darker side of things. So it's always like, Oh, are we going to make like a darker one or this? And, and still honestly looking at it. Still okay. In it's interesting. Like Very cool. But, uh, <laughs> but it's with, yeah, it's with him. And so the studio is making it kind of like, it's sort of like with that partnership and um, we're just going. So as we build the studio and try to make the movie, I don't know how long it's going to take. <laughs> so, like, I don't, you know what I mean? Like you just put a schedule out and you go, let's try and hit it. Gotcha. And then you realize you're like, wait, we're missing this component and this isn't working. You go, okay. And you do the best you can. And if it has to push, it pushes. So yeah, I, I don't have any dates or anything. We're just, just going. Yeah. Gotcha. Well, very excited for you. Um, I've kept you long enough. And I know, as you mentioned, you got dinner going for the family. So <laughs> I very, very much appreciate your time. And I think we kind of scratched the surface. So I'm looking forward to maybe talking with you again, maybe after some of this stuff has uh, happened with Spire and uh, yeah, to see sure. how things are kind of going there. But I really, again, appreciate your time, Mike. Of course. Yeah, I hope, you know, your listeners find it interesting. Uh, any nuggets there to help them come across and get through their day. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. And I good really luck with the new it. adventures, too. We'll, we'll look to see if, when that comes out here in a couple of weeks, you mentioned. Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, the new business. So, yeah, hopefully it'll be a uh, welcome splash in the awesome yeah awesome. very cool well thank you very much again for your time and with that we're out